Nebraska. Happy game day Friday, live from Memphis, Tennessee. Bill Hooks, Will Wilson. What's up, fellas? Dr. Dane Todd in the house. I got Henry T. Buchanan hanging out with me. We'll have T on here in a little bit. Will, what's it like, my friend? Oh, man. Well, let's just say it was a very bad start to the show as I had you coming through the same channel as the music. But, hey, we're up and rolling now. What's going on? Oh, man, that was such a good opening, too. I know. I'm sorry. I crapped on it. But uh, how's Memphis? You're live in it's Memphis. Live in Memphis, folks. And uh, it's a beautiful morning here. We got in late last night, about 8.30, 9 o'clock or so. Uh, and went right uh, to Bill Street and so much red. You guys, I mean, I get. I guess you would believe it. The, uh, the red that's here is overpowering any of the other teams uh, that are uh, get the pleasure to play at the Forum. But uh, epic night so far. Uh, a lot of Husker fans up and down the uh, Bill Street right now. Uh, it reminds me of when I went to uh, A and M, A and M back in the day. Well, your uh, DDT, you'll probably remember playing in College Station. Uh, you didn't get a chance to, but Husker fans were out and about, like shaking the doors, trying to get bars open. It's happening right now, and we don't play till five fifty. Bars don't open up till eleven. They're like shaking doors, like trying to line up. I love that. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's that meme of Eric Andre going up to like that gate, and he's like. Let me in. Let me in. <laughs> That's what Husker fans are like right now. Hey, who do you oh, got next to you? Hello, dude. I got Henry T. of Buchanan hanging out, my man, uh, right here. Uh, we're going to have him on a little bit because we hung out last night. And, um, I, like, when we get to that point, I want to talk about what this means and about the third – like, what this means for Nebraska and Nebraska fans. Uh, because, again, we all know that we travel deep, right? We all know that we never miss a chance to have a party. Uh, and go out and support our, our our team. I've heard there's more people coming. I had the, the best quote last night because people are like, why are there so many people here? And the one person goes, you know, this is like Nebraska's bowl game because we haven't had that taste in such a long time. This is all the feelings, all those years now, all in one central location right here in Memphis. And they don't even understand how, like, um, with a bowl game, we've got a month to plan. Right. Yes. And even more people there. Right. This is just the, the group of people who were like you who figured out where we're going to be and <laughs> click buy ticket. Right. Yeah. And it's gone. You know, right. These are the people who are ready to drop everything oh. at a moment's notice and just go to Nebraska stuff. Oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. It's like, um, you're right. It's like we're going there and the number of people like, then you hit it on the head. It's like, how do I make this work? It's not how I make it work. It's like, it's going to work. Uh, am I going to drive? Am I going to fly? Where am I going to get my seats at? Uh, you know, where hotels? And they just made it happen. So also, by the way, I am live. I'm on Beale Street, uh, but we're at the Rum Boogie Cafe, which is where they are hosting at 11 o'clock today. This will be the dedicated Husker bar today from 11 until whenever. They've got it all rented out. Um, the president of the alumni association just showed up. They're getting tables decorated. So right here, this will be the spot from, from starting at 11 o'clock today. You got to tell the story, Dane, you got to hear the story about you and murder going back to the hotel oh. last night and trying to find food. You, you oh, have to tell the story. Gosh, gosh, this is like, I feel like when I tell this, I, I am a 46 year old grown man and I still live some days like I'm 22 years old. So we've got, hey, watch your mouth, watch your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, here at 8, 8, 8.30, get an Uber to the to the hotel, check in, throw the bags in, go down to Bill Street. Because, again, last night, guys, there were people hanging out. You had KP, uh, Mule, and just like Robin Wash. They're all there. Like, this is like the – everything's happening. Uh, we're drinking. Henry T was there. And we're just drinking, drinking. And they were like, you know what? We'll get food later on. We'll get food. All of a sudden, we're like, oh, my God, it's 1 o'clock. The kitchens are closed. We're like, there's no pizza joints. We're like, order pizza, shut down, get back to the hotel. Uh, we might have eaten a frozen dinner Korean bowl at the microwave last night. From the from the, the lobby like gift shop thing, you know what I mean? Dane Todd. Oh, you- that's a solid move right there. <laughs> but it's like he's this? 18, he's in spring break. I hey, love it. That's okay. Don't knock a frozen I meal. love it. Those things are good every now and then, man. Uh, especially after you go. Oh, 100%. Oh, Here yeah. You go, streamers. You go, streamers. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, the the best part about those things is that you know you you get that one bite that's scorching hot, like two million degrees, and then your next one is is still full of ice. 
You just oh. never know what you're going to get. It's, it's like a little surprise every time. That is so relatable. Dude, I can crush oh. the frozen breakfast burritos at the hospital all the time. And it's just like, what am I going to get? Am I going to burn my mouth? Or am I going to freeze to death right here? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, so Dane, you're so true. So my first bite last night was the cold bite. I'm like, oh, oh no. my God. And I gave her a little whoop, 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 whoop. I'm like, that perfect. Is yeah, yeah. So you had a stirrable, you had a stirrable meal right there. You can you can mitigate a lot of that problem, right? You, you go with a burrito or a, the or the hot pocket, right? Yeah. And you're yeah, you just don't know. Mm -hmm. the well, again, uh, again, uh, thank you for hanging out with us. We've got Dr. Dane Todd, Will Wilson, uh, let's see, we're live from Memphis. We've got Henry T. Webb, Jeff Moats coming up, but we're going to talk. Just this show is all about Nebraska, Nebraska hoops the meaning of what's happening uh, here in Memphis. What could be a very special night for Nebraska at the end of this? Talk a lot about that. Uh, but how you guys feeling about this? You know, we're going to talk to Tia a little bit, but how you feeling like you look at this? That, by the way, there's been so much madness already. Thank you, Kentucky. Yeah. Thank you, John Calipari. My goodness. I've had a lot of people tell me maybe like they're feeling a little bit better. Maybe the SEC is not the powerhouse they were built up to be. Coming into this, they've thing. never been the powerhouse they're built up to be. Yeah, the SEC's always been just like fluffed up by everything. Look at their football teams, right? I mean, they're average at best, right? <laughs> the Big Ten just won the championship. That's right, in their faces, right? Um, but it's it's exciting. I mean, it's Nebraska in the NCAA tournament with a seed that's not number sixteen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. With a chance to win our first ever game and. Against a matchup that's tough with A uh, and M as good as they are at rebounding and and they're scoring, um, you know, inside the three point line, right? Because there's some some crazy stat like 350th or something in terms of mm -hmm. three pointers made, right? True. Yeah. And uh, whereas we're the polar opposite of that, where we live and die by the three. Um, so I mean, as long as we hit our shots today, you know. Stand by for a 30 point victory by the Huskers. 30 points, Ooh. obviously. I, I go big, man. Wow. Why not? Wow. Be excited about it. I'm excited, but I would be lying if I said I'm not nervous as hell. Well, I mean, you're not, it's not like we're, we're in the non con early season schedule right now anymore, right? right. Like, the season can be done tomorrow. <laughs> in theory, these are the best 64 teams in the country, right? And everybody debate that till the end of time, right? Mm -hmm. but, you know, 400 basketball teams in the in the country that are eligible for this. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean, what's there's no reason to be, like, nervous about the darn thing. The, our, our team's proven that they can play with anybody, <laughs> right, when they play – well, I just don't want to lose. Well, yeah. <laughs> I got bad news for you, Will. Like sometimes that happens. Uh, really? That's how sports work. That happens sometimes. I know you were a band guy. You don't quite get it. <laughs> that's how sports work. Uh, that's true. That's fair. That is fair. Yeah, we won yeah. all the band contests though. So you know, you're right. I don't know. What that's reasonable. Is. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the, the, in, in competitions, that's that's true. It's a real that's thing. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will, by the way, there's only one champion too. Remember that. Only one champion at the end of this whole thing. Thank you. Thank you. Hope. Only one team gets to gets to win the last game. Right. That's right. Everybody else goes home a loser. By, by, by the way, did you see a uh, Max Crosby had Nebraska in the Final Four? I love that. Wow, look at that. Let's go. That is hey. the guy for the Raiders. Yeah. Look, here Poor it is. Just what you know, one game at a time. This has been interesting. Um, I've said this a lot and a lot of people say this, but styles make fights, right? Styles make fights, especially in basketball. When you look at it, Nebraska loves to shoot the three. They shoot at a good clip. Uh, they've got a very veteran laden team. The other side you got Texas AM, the number one reading rebounding team in the country, very physical. Don't shoot it that well. So you got contrasting styles having you also look and go, okay, you got two unique teams. You got one team in Texas A&M. They're an underachieving SEC team. They were preseason number one in the SEC. They were supposed, they were picked to win the SEC. You got Nebraska on the other side, overachieving, picked to finish 12th to finish third. You got a couple, like talking about styles make fights. This is a classic example of what could go down here at 550 tonight. No, it should be interesting. I just hope they come out and aren't distracted and don't hook up bad shots, 
right off the bat, take their time to get looks that we can actually make, right? And as long as as long as we get things rolling early, it'll be fine. I got I think, that. Uh, Go ahead. I got that. It's, hey, so you brought the like my next question, and Daniel, be for you. I'm going to ask T this later on as well. Talk about distractions. A, a point in moment where you try to, you have to, or maybe a recollection of when you were playing that there were times, whether it be positive or negative, because I know it, it, like either side can be distractive. How do you take that away? Because I had this really feeling this morning. I don't know if you saw Nebraska basketball put out this video narrated by Derek Walker. It was a phenomenal video, but the title was, this is for all of us. Like, I didn't see the video, but it's yeah. a great video. It's near by Walker, but it's like, this is for all of us like that. I don't know how you block out that pressure going, man, uh, and, and just keep it focused on those men on that bench. Yeah. And you don't want to have that kind of additional pressure, especially in a situation like this, because in reality, well, yes, it's for all of Nebraska. Right. Because that's what we always talk about it being for the whole state. Um, mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's it's these guys on this basketball team who it's actually for. Right. <laughs> Coach Hoiberg, Hoiberg and the players. It's not for all of us. Well, we may love it. <laughs> And and want them to win. Like at the end of the day, it's it's those kids who are going to win, not us. You know, and it it means more to them, and they don't need extra pressure on everything. Hey, let's go to the phones. We got Jeff with. D he said his name is Double F Jeff. What up, Double F Jeff? Good morning. How's it going, guys? It's good. Amazing. That getting ready for tonight. Our first of seven wins in a row. Let's yes, go. Right. I'm with you. How much how much money do you have on the Huskers? I got ten bucks on the Huskers. I think it pays two thousand and eighty for them to win the dance. You got them going all the way. I love it. Oh yeah. What's your score prediction for tonight? Uh I'm gonna say eighty seven to seventy two. Woo! I love, it. I love it, Jeff. Double F Jeff. Enjoy the game, man. Yep. Yeah, AM right. doesn't have any defense, so we may hit a hundred, but <laughs> Um, that might be that might be the next game. I love it. I love it. Hey, take care, Jeff. Double F, Jeff. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother. But speaking of another double F, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Mozi. What's up, double F, Jeff. I I I never heard of that. Yeah, I haven't either. I don't <laughs> even know what want to know what the F stands Interesting. for. That makes Dane. That makes you a double DT. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I see DDP. Oh. I think of Jake the Snake Roberts with you, man. I know. Right? <laughs> I know. That's good stuff. So, hey, let's do this real quick. Let's take the break right now. And when we come back, we're going to jump over and we're going to have uh, Jeff Moach. We're going to talk a lot of prep stuff. Baseball has started. And uh, we'll talk some hoops with Moachie as well. So, we'll be right back. More next on the Morning Hookup on KFOR. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't bring it. I had headsets and everything. Start swearing. There we go. Oh. What's up? There we are. How's it going in Memphis, boys? Dude, they got the dollar bills on the walls and everything down wow. there, huh? <laughs> Look at that. All right, hey, can, that you guys, uh, uh, can you guys still hear me pretty good? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I see T. All right. Yeah, uh, T's right I, there. Took that, All right, I took the headphones off, so we got T with us as well. Yeah, no, that's good. Tell them to talk. What's up? Okay, good. I hear, yeah, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect, perfect. It's a little quieter, but can hear you just – can hear you okay. Yeah. I'll get him in here. I'm ready for a cocktail. Were you out with my buddy Jake last night, old mule? Oh, where's the mule, man? He was out. He bought my first drink last night. Walked in. Did he? Surprised. And we started chatting. Mule and I were chatting. KP was down there. Wash it. It was like – How was KP? Dude, he was uh, very. I don't know. T talked to KP for quite a while. He was like, it was like the Godfather. Oh yeah. It was like in this, like this patio, right? Yeah. And then in this table in the corner was like just people standing around talking, and it was just KP. <laughs> and and That's Tom awesome. and Tom Chattel. Tom Chattel was there. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Holding court, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Boy, the stories that they could tell between those two, the stories that they could tell from what they've covered. Oh, it was, dude, it was those guys. You had, like I said, Washington was there. You had Kevin Suits. Like, it was Pat Norris, equipment guy. Uh, he was there. Like, it was, everybody was, like, enjoying this. Yeah, RJ, the trainer. Tra- I mean, the trainer was there. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, the trainer? Yeah. yeah. RJ's a good dude. Yes, he is. So, like, everybody was, like, soaking in. Like, you could feel it. They were just soaking in these moments. Last night, because the bar we're at, we're at, it's called the Tin Roof. It is literally, you could, from where we were, you could look and see where we're playing at. Like, the forum is literally right there. Well, you said you were, like, 900 feet. Your hotel is, like, 900 feet away from the from the yeah. arena. Yeah, so, like, I'll show you, like, the forum, from where I'm at, it's just, like, right over there. Oh, wow, oh, yeah, man. you're right there, dude. You guys are right yeah. there. You can see all like there's like it's a hustle and bustle going on down here now. That's so, good, man. That's you'd be able to crawl there, no problem <laughs> by five. You should, <laughs> hey, hey, you should have seen the, you should have seen my waddle last night. <laughs> Folks is walking in Memphis. Honestly, I went in there last night. We just started going and like I just wanted like a I needed a tall crown and water. She's like double or single. I said double. It was a thirty two ounce cup. Hey, <laughs> there were I saw it. Hey, I went to the press box last night after my son's track meet. We were over there, and there was somebody, some guy drinking like a tall boy glass of Crown and water. That's my guy. I mean, there was quite a few guy of those guys that were doing that last night out there. Big gulp. Well, the big drink last night, beer wise, was that uh, Yingling. Oh, I would. Oh, people love that down south, and and Nebraskans for whatever reason love that. When I lived in Atlanta for a decade, Yingling down there is like like Bush Light. No you way. Know, like, no. It's not like, you know, you, you have yingling on hand just because you got yingling on hand. Whereas <laughs> here, everybody's like, man, get, bring me back some yingling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, yeah, it's not it, bad. But. They don't sell it past Kansas City or oh. LA. No, I mean, it's, I know it's not out west out there where I'm at. But Yeah. Right. Look at that. Boy, hey, you should see, they're setting it up. They're putting all the alumni stuff <laughs> out, the pom-poms. Are going to look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got to get ready. Getting it set. Got to get those donations. <laughs> <laughs> they put the Husker flag is getting it put outside right now. Hey, oh, I, here just, we go. I just ignore their the, here, here the go. emails. I here didn't we go. know about this. <laughs> was a tweet. I saw it on the Twitter. Welcome back to the Hook Up again, Bill Hook. Will Wilson, man, you could tell it must be a special day because what one we're down in Memphis, we're at the Run Boogie Cafe where they're about to kick off the Husker alumni uh, get together down here. But I'm looking at the screen; it's a special day. There's a party going on in Memphis. There's a party going on back in Lincoln. We got Henry T right here beside me. We got Jeff Moats in the house. Doctor Dane Todd, Will Wilson, man, the morning hookup is on fire this morning, man. Appreciate you guys so much, uh, Moatsy. What's going on? I know, I know, it's like Husker centric. It's March. Yeah. Uh, but there's some. Uh, there's a lot of prep baseballs getting kicked off right now. You you know what? I I will keep that brief because I know it's a game day atmosphere here on the show. So, but I I will tell you this: I went and saw East play Southeast in baseball, and I I'm going to tell you guys right now, and I know I might ruffle a few feathers. I don't think at this point anybody's going to touch that Lincoln East baseball team. They are for real. When you got three Husker commits, you got one commit to Michigan, you got a commit to Missouri State, and then you have another one to Kansas State. That's all part of your starting lineup or your pitching rotation. I mean, they are just they, – they picked up from where they were a year ago when they won that state title up in Omaha, and then when they won the American Legion – well, the American Legion State Baseball Championship and then finished up as a runner-up in the American Legion World Series. I, I just don't think right now – uh, East is going to be touchable. I think they may be with maybe a couple of Omaha teams, but other than that, they're they're phenomenal. Wow! And, I, I um, I, uh, when did they get NIL in high school baseball? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know that too. But it, you know what? In all seriousness, though, I thought with the way Southeast played at, at the beginning of the ball game on Tuesday, I thought, man, this is going to be a back and forth deal, a slugfest. But then East. Just got hot in the third inning. They scored 11 runs on eight hits in the third inning and, and put it away. They won it in five innings. Holy cow. I mean, and, and you know, Dane, very well that Southeast baseball has had a rich tradition. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've been very successful. 
it looked like this year it was going to be the same way. They got some guys over there that came in from other schools too. Uh, and Montana Jones has done a good job of, of, you know, rebuilding that program too. Uh, but the way that East played, man, it, it's like they didn't skip a beat. It looked like they took a couple of jabs to the to the mouth, and then they just came back like they always do, and they found a way to get big hits and get people on base, and and that's all it took. And and the pitching with Carter Carter Mick, who's a Nebraska commit, guys, Carter Mick was kind of ruffled a little bit, but he came out pretty strong, and he finished. He must have had seven strikeouts over the course of four innings. Wow, he he really did a good job. And, and when you look at Joey Sinstock, who's a future Husker, uh, playing shortstop, had a couple of big hits, had a two-run triple in that 11-run um, uh, third inning. Uh, you know, they, they really look solid. But, you know, when you look at the state right now for baseball, it's either going to be East High, it's going to be Millard West, maybe Millard South. Uh, there's talk of Papillion La Vista South being pretty good. Creighton Prep, West Side. Those are the teams that are being highly talked about right now at the high school baseball level here in this state. And, and then when you look at class B with Norris, you know, with Kale Fountain, you know, heading down to LSU, I mean, they're, they're another team to keep an eye on, but uh, it was an interesting start to the spring season. And uh, we still got more baseball to check out here and we'll keep on tabs with that here as we move forward. Well, you know, as much as it pains me for East to win anything, <laughs> especially if they're beating Southeast, at, at least well, it is, at least it's a Lincoln School, right. right? You know, like, you know, me, Lincoln in the little surrounding area. Well, schools. with me, you know, me being a former rocket too, I can, kind oh, of I know sympath- that I can, sympathize. I mean, I don't have, it doesn't bother me as much if Northeast wins something because it'll be the first time. Well, that'll be okay. So. Now I will tell you this, <laughs> we got 12 boys state basketball titles and how many does Southeast have? Oh, wow. Uh, a I can't big, remember. A big goose egg. I can't remember the number <laughs> <laughs> because there's none. <laughs> Wow, it's hot in here. You got, you got five runner-ups over That's true. It's but true. And I will say this, though. Southeast has had some great great basketball players over there. And we were just talking about off-air Jake Muleheisen. Oh, yeah, Jake. Great great player. You know, and even Barrett Rude was a good player over there. Nick Baugh. Nick Baugh. Does, he, does Nick still hold the state record for uh, free throws made in a row? I believe he does. He does. I, I, he does. I, I need to double-check. There's some, but, like, insane number. Like, yeah. 50 or something in a row it might have been more than that but when you guys were there in 02 and 03 in the in the state championship i mean you guys were legitimately good and even in 01 when yep. southeast was the number one seed in the tournament and got beat by bellevue west yeah. I and mean, that was still a, a great team disappointing southeast. yeah it was disappointing. but you know but i had to throw that oh yeah 100 that's a good just a, right yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a great yeah. one i mean the football titles you guys got more than us yeah, far, yes we so. do <laughs> anyway but yeah we'll we'll keep an eye we got more baseball I'll check out next week we'll talk more about it next week too but, and then track seasons are on their way right now yeah, yeah in fact uh I, my son they had the northeast relays out at northwest yesterday and uh, I, I, you know what? That's a nice setup for track, I think, um, at, at UBT. And uh, I, I don't have the team results. I know my son was on the mixed 4 by 4 relay team, and they won that. Northeast got that. Southeast, I think, had a team in there, too, and Lincoln High and Pius. You know, they had a good group of kids there. But Southeast, Southeast sprinters look tremendous. The, the East High girls distance relay teams and the distance runners did an outstanding job, too. I, I just think track and field. Uh, when you look at all the the boys and girls teams in town, you you when you think of outstanding not only individual competitors but team organized team uh, performances, East is up there. Usually Southwest, Southeast. I mean, Lincoln High's got a good sprinting uh, team too. Uh, but it was nice to see that. It was a little chilly, man. It, it when you get out there in that open air out yeah. in Northwest Lincoln, right there off the interstate. You, that, mm. I mean, that's massive wind tunnel. that wind is no joke oh it, it and it's stadium. yeah it, it it it's got a little bite to it but yeah. it was a good day i would not want to run on a day like this no southeast has that kid uh who was the fresh and running back on their team uh, um, this year yeah um God, i can't think, I of, can't his think of his name but he's supposed to be a, a yeah. very good long and triple jumper yeah i i didn't get a chance to see the field events yeah. yesterday i just saw a couple i mostly the running events it was the relays yeah 
and and they also had the throwers run the relays. Oh, did they really? Oh, uh, it, 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 that's fun to watch. Oh, yeah, without a question. N- it, nothing like watching big sloppies try to run. Well, in the northeast, <laughs> the northeast throwers won the relay. Oh, did they? Really? They did. That's awesome. Well, and you know they got a couple of kids that were good football players or other good athletes in volleyball and basketball. They're the throwers that. They got some quickness, and you know they won that. But yeah, it's a, it's a fun time, and and there will be other track meets I'll go out and cover too uh, as we go through the spring. Uh, big meets coming up. Uh, I know there's the the hack meet is up at Columbus this year, um, and uh, West Side's always a big one too. That's up there in Omaha next weekend. Very nice, big sloppies, Dane. The, the big sloppies, big man. Love the big sloppies. Perfect. Again, Love those guys. Uh, yeah. Boats. It's really cool. There's so many former uh, Nebraska high schoolers playing in this NCAA tournament. Yeah, like uh, you know Charlie Easley. I saw a little bit of their game last night with uh, Iowa State. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and it's tough for see to see a kid like Charlie Easley who's played, who's had a pretty good career, and you know, come up short. But they made it to the tournament. Mm-hmm. You know, not all those kids get there. Um, uh, the Hostrider kid, one of the Hostriders is up there at South Dakota State as well that, that played at Pius. And so it, it's nice to see local kids when they get in. Uh, you know, uh, at one point, I remember when my brother, uh, when he was at Creighton, and, and then Nick Baugh was at Kansas at the time before he transferred to Creighton. And then Katie Montgomery at from Pius X, when they were, she was playing at Iowa State, there was a deal where, you know, they all followed – you know, the media was following them around to see where they were going to be going in the in the tournament and so forth. It's nice to do that because not everybody realizes that, uh, you know, a lot of these kids around here, they don't always go to Nebraska. They don't always stay around in-state. They may go elsewhere, and they get on a team that makes the NCAA tournament. It's nice to see that. You get that local connection. That mm-hmm. way you can follow and see how they do. Uh, but unfortunately for South Dakota State, man, Iowa State looked absolutely tough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. in that game up in Omaha last night. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's nice to see that. And, um, you know, and then of course you got the game tonight with Nebraska and Texas A&M, uh, which I, th- I think Nebraska can pull off. And, and simply because w- when you see how Nebraska's played over the course of the last month and, and I'm, and I'm, I'm not going to reflect on that Illinois game. Cause I thought really Nebraska played well against Illinois in the big 10 semifinal. And, um, but overall, the way that the chemistry has been with what Coach Hoiberg has put on that floor this year, it, it just speaks volumes on what Nebraska fans have been clamoring for for a long time. And, and you know, T, you know, an alum and a former player in the program, you know, has been, you know, among that group wanting to see the success go to another level. Uh, obviously, the goal is to then to win a game in the tournament, and then you go from there. You know, if they get a win tonight, and then if if for some strange reason they pull off the biggest upset against Houston, let's just say if it is Houston, you know, um, then you've really elevated yourself to another level, and that's where you start to build. And you've seen that with some of these other mid-major schools that have gone on to bigger conferences. And, and I'll use, you know, Creighton as an example. When they went to the Big East, you know, they were always that team that was the mid-major that got in and pulled off the occasional upset on a major conference team. Now they go to the Big East. They've gotten to the Sweet 16 under the modern format. They've now reached the Elite Eight. And then the next goal for them is to try to get to the Final Four. So if you go in baby steps like that, and I think Nebraska is under the same on that same track. If Nebraska can do that, you're going to see things really start to build and take off. And, and I think with what Coach Hoiberg has done, and found the right person. Now, there's no question that this is a team that could definitely win a game tonight and really build beyond. It. That'd be awesome. That's the whole goal, right? You got to win the first one. Yeah, right? and, and that's what it takes. Creighton so, got it done, of course, for you. Yeah, it, uh, boy, that was an interesting game yesterday with Akron. They, they kept it close for a while. Well, the 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 Freeman kid banks in a three. Because he he only hit in like 17 threes all season. Mm-hmm. And he and he had like three of them in the first half. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this got interesting. But you know, when they went on the eight-nothing run, I thought, okay, yeah. now you're starting to see the tide. And then they go up by 10 or 12 or whatever it was. I think they're up by as much as 20 at one point. They ended up winning by 17. Uh, it, it's a big win. But tomorrow night, when they play Oregon and Dana Altman, I'm I'm oh. dubbing it the Dana Altman Bowl. <laughs> uh 
I mean, that, it'll be a good game, I think. And you know, Oregon's on a roll too. Yeah, they're really good. And then they're playing well. They won the won the final Pac-12 tournament championship. So, you know, Dana knows how to win at this time of the year. And he took Oregon to the final four. What was it in 2017? That, 17. That's when Carolina won it. That's what I remember. Yeah. Okay. So he knows what it takes, and and Dana knows how to win. And uh, to see him going up against the, the team that he coached for 16 seasons before he moved out to Eugene, uh, I think there's a lot of emotion involved. I mean, there's there's people from up there in Omaha or that are around the state that follow Creighton that like Dana. You know, they're going to be torn. It's like, you know, we want to see Dana do well, but we want our team to do well too. Mm-hmm. You know, that that's where, you know, things come into kind of a – a perplexing situation, but uh, regardless of who wins that game tomorrow night, I mean, that that's a big step for them. And, you know, for, for Oregon entering uh, the big 10 now, uh, you know, that that'll just show the rest of the big 10, what type of team they're going to be down the road too. It still just floors me when we talk about a school like Oregon, who's now in the big 10. Yeah. Like I still can't, yeah. like, every time something like that gets said, mm-hmm. I'm just like, whoa, 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 wait, I forgot that they and you are got, now a big well, 10 UCLA, school. UCLA, big 10, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, what are we, what are we doing here guys? Yeah. So whatever. Hey, I was going to ask you hooks is, is the new AD Troy Dannon going to be down there at all? Do you know? I have, uh, I, we caught word by the way. Yes, he will be, he will be in attendance. He's actually already here. Uh, he was doing interviews yesterday uh, the guy's making his rounds. Uh, if you saw yesterday on social media, he was out on the Capitol lawn yesterday. Uh, he met the group out there because they were doing a tug of war kind of thing. And uh, he was here yesterday doing interviews. I know he caught one. I think 10-11 caught up with him. So he is in attendance. Uh, the other side of that uh, team, their AD, where it is, he will not be here. I'm not going to lie. That's probably Interesting. a solid move on his part. Yeah. Interesting. Solid move. So, he, needs, he needs to not end up on, you know, yeah. becoming the the face of what's down there. And so that would obviously be a solid move by Trav to just avoid the whole scenario. Yeah. It, it, it kind of sounds like you can get the feeling. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of people like T's here, uh, you know, an alum, a legend. He's been waving to people that knows him. Uh, you got people from everywhere. Uh, you're they, The word is Coach Rule is going to be in attendance. Uh, you're Troy Dannon is down here. You've got uh, Compton. All like people are making their way back uh, for this moment uh, to see hopefully some history, right? Like we're talking about history for one program, and that is Nebraska. You got it on the other side. A and M's trying to stop it from happening, right? And yeah. if you go back to it. The NCAA has such a sense of humor most of the time. When you look at these matchups, we're talking about. It, and again, they couldn't have scripted the uh, Trev Alberts going to A and M and getting that matchup. But you look at it, what you thought, like, look at it, you got Oregon, Dana Altman, you got Creighton playing Creighton. Look at the other side. Somehow Tennessee and Texas are matched up, huh? Rick Barnes, yeah. old school. The storylines that they, they they have such a sense of humor when you put these brackets together. And, and I, th- I think that helps draw in more people, too, to kind of follow and, and, and get interested in these matchups, you know. It, it, we, we've been talking about here all week about how Nebraska and Texas A&M are playing and, and the fact that Trev Alberts is now down at Texas A&M. You know, I, I think that's why – and I'm not saying that's usually why they do these selections, but it, it may be by pure coincidence. <laughs> but I, I really think this helps in further enhancing the storylines of each of these matchups. You talked about Rick Barnes now going up against Texas. And, you know, I, and by the way, I got Tennessee winning that game, so <laughs> – I'm not heartbroken about that, but anyway, so, but I digress, but yeah, you're right. It's nice to see it. And and this is outside, I think the holiday season, maybe the most wonderful time of the year, right? Oh, I think this might trump a lot of holidays. Moats in my, <laughs> in my book. So again, Moats, thank you. Uh, I got to tell you, it is picking up down here. I'll give you guys a view of what's starting to happen and transpire on Bill Street. As you see, yep. fans are picking up. You're starting to see. The red dot in, you're starting to see a lot of different colors. We've seen Baylor. We've seen some Longwood. We've seen a lot. It's starting to pick up down here. So, uh, Moats, thank you, my friend. Thank you. You for bet. Us. So, Jeff Moats right there. We're going to take a break, come back with Henry T. Buchanan, Dr. Dane Todd. Uh, there's so many questions for you guys in these moments that I want to talk about. So, let's take a break, and we'll be, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Morning Hookup with Bill Hooks and Will Wilson. More coming up. Uh, 
I think he's with these kids, but he got Teron Lou. I was trying to come here and take a photo with me, but he's got he's got Lou's jersey. Yeah, Lou's Lou jersey on. He's like a local celebrity here, man. Or triple jump. They, and he did it. I think uh, where uh, Moses' uh, brother got second in the, in the uh, stage. Yeah. Yep. Dude, he's a legend here. He's just like waving to people. Like it's like a. It's, it's my teammates. Look, Jeff Reckway is calling him. He, he was, knows everybody. He hey, showed hey, me hey, like, hey, up, when um, when most of my Dana Altman. I'm he showed me a the, text the, the on St. Patty's Day with Dana Altman. He was texting Altman on St. Patty's Day, congratulating him for hey. winning the Pac-12. Hey, what? He's like the text said, "Thanks, T." Okay, well, come on. Hopefully, down Dante to, and the boys can keep it going. Place. Uh, run, How the hell does he tell him? Hey, we had to run he knows everybody. Cafe. It's a run life function. Start 11, but I'm in here doing the radio. By show the way, right super cool story. We're walking to breakfast this morning and leaving breakfast. By the way, I had grits. You guys ever had grits? Oh, oh grits are the best, I, man. Oh, oh, yeah, Christ. Down, 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 down. Boy, yeah. Ross taught me how to eat grits. And the lady was like, the I'm great lady was like, would you like cheese? Or I said, just give me the regular, all right, all right. put some butter, and I'm good. So we're walking back. We meet this uh, these older gentlemen were coming across, and they had Vermont shirts on. Right, and they yeah. tell us their story. They're like you guys come, you know, after the red, we like create a conversation with people. These guys, what they do every year, two buddies, pick a location they've never visited for a, a first and second round games, and they go. That's awesome. They're from Vermont. Vermont, and they're like, we've never been to Memphis. This was our track this year. Hopefully, we get good games. And he was like telling us stories about different spots and different great games they've got to see. They were there when Virginia got the one sixteen matchup. Oh, really? Yes. He said one once one year there was like, if you remember, I can't remember what year it was, there was a pod where it was a bunch of the four and five, you know, four thirteen, five twelves. At the end of day one or going into the second round, it was all the twelves and thirteens in the in the pod. All the fours and fives were out. Wow. Dude, that's a good time, man. I, I would love to do something like that when I'm you well know, older. Retired. Right? Like Hooks' <laughs> age. I'm when I'm like Hooks' age. Go to some of the, like the classic things, right? Like go down to the Iron Bowl, yes. go to um Michigan, Ohio State, go yes. like travel to some of those like big, you know, matchups. Like I don't care about going to the Super Bowl so much, right? No. But I, I think it'd be fun to just go to some hey. of those like big rivalry games. Mm-hmm. Hey, the Husker fans found beer. No, yeah, they did. Exactly. Yeah, they did. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's coming from off the road. They're all like from from like right behind us over here. The beer's somewhere. I don't know. How's the from. how's the weather? Uh, mid fifties. It's cloudy today. I mean, I'm not going to complain. It's going to be high as sixty five. It's not cold. It ain't cold. That's nice. That's cold nice. here. Yeah, it's cold. cold. It's gross here, man. Not That's awesome. Quiz, uh, poll question. I have a 6 a.m. flight tomorrow. When Nebraska wins, do I even go to bed? No, absolutely not. Oh, you're, but then your day is going to be miserable. Tomorrow. His day is going to so, be miserable no matter what. Yeah, but a little bit of sleep would help. I don't know. But, so I got to go back. So, Dan, I'm here. I leave at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I'm going, I get in Omaha at 10 15. It's Sophia's birthday tomorrow. And I have, we have four tickets. Our financial lady gave us four tickets. So I'm getting off the plane, driving right to CHI, parking the car, and going to watch basketball. Oh, my God. You're going to need some sleep, bro. Tell me Sophia's going with you. Oh, yeah. So they're going to bring her up. It's Sophia, her boyfriend, and Ty. They're going to meet okay. us Okay. I was going to say. Gonna meet them and go watch two more basketball games. Dude, you're going to be a miserable human being by tomorrow evening. Mm-hmm. But I would recommend just powering through. Like I did that in Vegas when I was back in my mid twenties. We had a yeah. we took that, like a, we took that Allegiant Air flight. Hang on, yeah. sit tight, I sit go. tight. Go, 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 go. Welcome back go. in the morning hookup. Oh boy, what a great Friday! It is game day uh, live from Memphis, Tennessee at the Rum Boogie Cafe. Henry T. Hanging out with me, Dane Todd back in the studio with Will Wilson. Uh, it is picking up, man. Husker fans are picking up. I just said on the stream, if you're hanging out, um, they Husker fans somehow found the beer. Places aren't open yet, but I'm watching from right behind us. They're walking down, and I just see big, the biggest beers you've ever seen. They're just finding their way. 
Um, what's the word on Texas A&M fans? Are, are a lot of them, or what's no, the word? I, I haven't seen a lot. I've no. maybe seen one hat. We were having that conversation yeah. earlier. T and I had it uh, my last buddy, night. My buddy Murr is here with me hanging out. But last night, we're like, we see red everywhere, which is not, you know, again, as expected. But didn't see an a and shirt. Didn't see a Baylor. Like, because you got uh, – Clemson, New Mexico are here. <laughs> Baylor and Colgate, us and AM are here. I mean, you're you're literally less than an hour from tip off for the first session, and you just don't see a lot of them. It's it's a it's a weird deal. At is uh, Coach Calipari's uh, time coming to an end? No, I think think he's going to have to adjust. I mean, it's he it's some came to the realization that the one and dones is is not going to get you there anymore. You need experience. Case in point with that kid dropping those 10 threes. And he just said, I know I'm not going into the NBA, but I can play with these guys. And uh, and that's and, that, and that's his leadership and that's his maturity and that's his experience versus a talented freshman that's that's raw that's learning the game. So that's that's it. It. so he's going to have to change his, his recruiting. He's got to change his style of play. Totally off topic of that, if you watch that game, we were going through the airport and trying to keep up uh, with the Kentucky game. The, the gentleman, I can't even call him a kid, uh, for Oakland last night, what a phenomenal story. Did you guys happen to catch his season stats at all? No. Okay, so listen to this. You got, like, I'm not lying. I looked it up. I saw this. So the, he has taken 335 shots this season, okay? 335 shots. He shoots 37.3% on the season. Of those 335 shots, he has taken 327 three-point shots. Holy cow. <laughs> he has taken the entire season eight, eight two-pointers. That's all he does. Yeah. I, it's right here. I looked Dude, it up. That's incredible. He and, and, he, and he came from an NIA, NAIA school. Yes. Now, yeah, see, what, what, what T's not saying is if there was a three-point line when he played, he would be oh. doing the same thing. Like, well, it was the last my last two years. Now, if Coach okay. Need would have allowed me to do it, there there's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Hey, hey, you're just you're just following the coach, and that's all it was, right? You're just listening to the coaches. Hey, I wanted to. <laughs> I'm, on a, I'm, I'm on I'm on I'm on alumni uh, uh, text chain uh, with Bo Reed and Hoppin and all those guys. You know, we always complimenting each other, and uh, you know, and we all pretty much consensus that Brian Cards. Is literally the best point guard to ever play at Nebraska. You know, all the time leading assists. So we got that out and everything, and so we continued talking. And um, and then I just finally said we were talking about three point shooting. I said, man, I said if Coach Need would allow me to shoot, um, you know, I might have uh, I might have put up some numbers as well. And and Paul Reed just said, yeah, I love that comment because that's true. Because back then it was the first two years, so it wasn't really prevalent back then. So you you know I mean it was still pulls you had to go down to the well we had to go down to D Vic or whoever but in our days and uh, uh, you know of that era so we didn't we didn't focus on the three point shot you know I was just able to shoot it every once in a while. Oh wow. man, what an amazing time I got here with Chief Cannon, Doctor Dane Todd. I want to ask you guys, especially uh, Dane, you going to the university uh, and, and growing up in Nebraska and being a part of athletics. T being a being a hooper, a legend at Nebraska. When you guys look at this game coming up, um, I, I, I've come out and said it. Like, this is – I'm a transplant, 01, but it's it means so much. When you get to that point, like, T, tell me what this means to you. Like, you – like, again, I go back. They put that commercial out, this that, that video out that said, this is for all of us. Yes. And, and, no, and I – actually, I didn't know you had already saw it. Somebody sent that to me this morning, and I actually listened to it, watched it this morning. And what, and what Derek Walker said was 1,000% correct. Mm-hmm. This is for everyone, you know, not only the former players, the fans, the, you know, the coaching staff, you know, everybody that's ever been associated with Nebraska, even the state. This means everything. Uh, not putting pressure on the kids. I think Coach Hoiberg does a phenomenal job of, of, of shielding those kids away from all the media and, and all the pressures that, that normally uh, they would endure, especially, especially in this um, social media uh, society. But I tell you what, man, it's it brings chills. That's why I'm here. I mean, every time I think about it, man, if we get this win, you know, am I going to be to hold back my tears if we win? I mean, today, I mean, seriously. Yeah. I mean, I'm, that's how it's emotional. emotional. I, I'm trying to be calm and cool and collected, but inside my stomach is just, you know, I'm a nervous wreck, and mm-hmm. and I want to see it so bad, you know. And I can see it in the fans, you know, talking to 
talking to uh, Kate, you know, Kent Pavelka last night and Tom Chattel and Jake Newheiser and all those guys, talking to those guys last night, everybody wants it. And uh, and it's just, you know, I just got off the phone with one of my teammates, uh, Jeff Reckaway, Bo Reed, Eric Strickland. They're, they're well, Reckaway's already here, Bo Reed and, and Eric Strickland's in route. You know, everybody wants to be a part of this potential history. And, uh, and I think everybody's excited. Uh, See, it's, it's like, fun like, listening you bring up those people, right? And bring up those former players because I still remember growing up and and I'm like I'm the first to admit, like I'm I'm no big basketball connoisseur, right? Like it it heck uh who was it? It was uh uh Jake um what was uh I'm blanking on his last name, Jake the the lineman, the 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 guy who fell over backwards. Cotton. Cotton. Yeah, Jake Cotton yeah. used to call in under fake names and ask me basketball questions <laughs> on the show, right? Because he knew I didn't know anything about it, right? And so, <laughs> but I still remember going to Nebraska games with my dad yep. at the old Devaney when yeah. it was just flat bench seating, and we would go sit all the way up top in there because obviously we were young right so you, you just squirreling around but watching eric piakowski and and eric strickland and all those guys play in those games so even though like yes i'm uh, i'm a big nebraska fan in general but it you're right it does mean a lot to a lot of people because it's something that it's it's unique for us right so kentucky's sitting there wondering if if they need to fire their coach because they haven't won a championship in the last three years, right? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas we're sitting here saying, man, Hoiberg's the greatest thing since sliced bread right now because <laughs> we made it to the tournament and we're not the 16 seed, right? Yeah. We're, we're like, we've got a chance to do something we've never done. And so it is a big deal to – everyone and it does mean a lot to everybody i just hope that the players don't don't get too hyped up or emotional about it because it, they need to be honestly they need to be like robots out there they got to just yep. go out there and do what they know how to do yeah well you know to your point uh, from my understanding i talked to robin yesterday and 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 pat uh, Pat Norris and a few of them, and I guess that practice was an open practice. I didn't yep. get in town and, and time to go watch it, but they said that they – this must be a shooter's court because I guess nobody on the team could miss. Uh, they're zeroed in. I mean, so they get comfortable. Now, unfortunately, the shoot around today, they, they only get 20 minutes. But it seems like k being k I guess everybody's this comfortable – with the court, with the surroundings. And I think from an offensive standpoint, I think we'd be okay. I think it's going to be, it's more pressure on the fans than it is the players. The players already know they, they had the game plan and, you know, they, I mean, this is Dr. Day, this is what they do, you know, and this is what they've been preparing for. And and they want to do it for Coach Hoiberg as well. I mean, just think about it. Last year, they, 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 they restructured his salary. He's, you know, uh, they've been calling for his head the last two or three years, you know, I mean, not giving the guy an opportunity, you know, but, but I've been standing by him since day one, especially since I've been on the show with these guys and, and, and just regardless of the record, I, you know, I know the guy can coach and, uh, and now he's showing, he's showing not only the Nebraska fans, he's showing the nation. I mean, Hoyberg can flat out get it done. Uh, he's a, he's an offensive genius. Uh, Nate uh, is, is handling the defense. I mean, they're just operating at all cylinders. And I just think that every player that I talk to, I mean, you all see this tech strand that I'm on. I mean, everybody is just comment and fired up and just, I've never seen so much activity on a text strand in ever. I mean, since everybody's just in tune, they want to be here, but you know, it's just unfortunately not everybody can make it, but people are ready and they're ready for this win. Hey, I want to ask uh, both you guys because uh, you got a former football player. We got a former Hoover. Obviously, we're down here uh, for a 550. Maybe history being made for Nebraska tonight. Did it mean more for you guys in the times to watch other programs succeed as well? Because Dane, obviously, you played football. Did you ever look up and go, man, basketball, man, it, it brings more energy to programs? Because I feel like right now, for football, for instance, that the basketball has energized football. Yeah. Right now, because you see Coach Rule, Coach Rule all in. You see him; he's going to make his way here. He's been rushing courts. Did you guys have that 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 pride when other programs and it made you like want to try and like and do better things with your teams? Well, it's nice to have the guys 
guys and gals right around yeah. you who are doing well right because you're down there um yeah you know the facility's a little more spread out now than they were <laughs> when when henry and i were down there right because everybody's kind of got their own spot now and location but when we were down there you know, everybody ate at the same training table. Everybody studied in the same training hall. Everybody worked out in the same weight room. like, And so you were always around all of the other athletes, right? And so the teams were doing well. You were super stoked for it because you knew all those other people, right? Like I, I remember um, a girl named Ashley Selig, okay? And she won the NCAA all-around track and field, right? And you were super stoked for her because I saw Ashley all the time, right? Or um, um, Sarah Pavin, right? NCAA yeah. Volleyball Player of the Year. or um, Just all those teams who had so much success and you were just happy to be around them because they were being successful. And then when we'd accidentally win a football game, right, they were happy that we won because everybody's happy when football wins, right? You know, it's just – it was great. Well, well, in my era, <laughs> Nebraska and Oklahoma is one and two every year. So, no, oh, yeah, of course, right? Yeah, yeah. You got that. Going. You had that rolling for you. We, uh, I can't say that we were ever number one or two. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I had to agree with you on that. And and watching, you know, the other team succeed. And I, when I first started with this show with, with these guys, uh, you know, I, I follow the bowling, bowling, winning championships. I follow every sport. If if it's if it's on ESPN. Or, or I just look it up on social media. The rest of the team, the you know, the, I mean, soccer. I mean, track and field. Cause they, we just win the Big Ten. Was it last year or was it the indoor? One of them. But anyway, this year. Yeah. This year. And don't we got a, like a, a a a high jumper champion or something like that? Or we did. So, so so you follow that and you see that success. But it's still no matter what happens at the University of Nebraska. Nebraska is everything. We don't have professional teams. <laughs> you know, it's all, you know, yeah, okay, Creighton, yes, Creighton's crazy. You know, they're in the Big East. It's separate. It's, the state of Nebraska is all about Nebraska, University of Nebraska, yep. every sport that we have. And nobody supports their programs like Nebraska. In case in point, you know, my senior year, we play in Rochester, New York in a tournament. You know, Butler, we ended up beating Butler in the championship out there. We out there looking in the stands, all red. This is in Roger, This is upstate New York. We had more fans than the host university on the road. This is back in '88. So think about that. <laughs> you know, the fans, man. We got the best. I mean, everybody want to say they got the best fans. No. Right <laughs> win, lose, or draw. I mean, there's no fair weather. We're going to show a win, lose, or draw. And that's what I love about Nebraska, and, and that's why I'm so involved. And I'd like to get back as much as I can. And now it's starting to pick up. Like, it's, oh, boy. it's crazy out here right now. It's just red everywhere. And you yeah. know, I'm, at, I'm at the airport flying here uh, yesterday morning, so I'm sitting there uh, across from um, a couple, and they went to Arkansas. Their son played football, Texas A&M. And then there was a then was a, then it was a guy that was sitting next to me. He said, "Hey." You went to Nebraska? I said, yeah, you know, of course I got my Nebraska gear. I said, yes. I said, I play a little ball. He said, hey, I play football back there under um, under uh, Bill Callahan. And, of course, I started asking the questions. And all of a sudden, for about an hour, it was a conversation between Nebraska football, basketball, and then Texas A&M and Arkansas. It's just like that. And, and they just talked our heads off. And I think his name was Andre Jones or something. Like oh, yeah, Andre? Yeah. 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 He lives on Phoenix now. You know him? I was just gonna ask who it was because I played football for Gallahan too. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was him. Yeah, he lives out in Phoenix now. I yeah. didn't know he was. He, I just happened to sit down and sit wow. down right next to him. Wow, yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah. All right, well, what's up, my man? Well, we got about two and a half minutes left. Right, let's, let's go, go. Uh, keys to the game and get some score predictions. Well, I give you get your scores out because your keys are this: can you shoot? Can you make hoops? Can you hit the three well? Uh, you got to uh, defend. I think it's Wade, the, the fifth or sixth or whatever, two-time SEC uh, player, uh, 19 points a game, and it's the boards. It's the boards, man. I, I just want to say respond. Re respond to all the adversity. Don't get down and, and stay with the game plan uh, because they pick up each other. Uh, we're going to have to box out. I think that's going to be that's going to be the key because obviously Texas A&M is not a great shooting team. So they look forward. That's no wonder that they – 
the leading offensive uh, rebounding team in the country because they don't shoot very they well. They know how to get their misses. Yeah, they, they know, know how to get their yeah, misses. Exactly. So I, I think we're in a, I think we're in a good spot. I give me that know. score. Give me that score. Let's you know, go. I'm always in the seventies, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go seventy-eight to sixty-nine. Uh, seventy-eight, sixty-nine. Dane Todd, what you got? My nice. Man? I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little higher, eighty-two to seventy-five. But the uh, I, I agree with the key. Like we've got to play our basketball and not yep. get not try to get drug into a slug fest down low with mm -hmm. them. I think we've got to minimize their offensive second chances, but we got to not play their game. I'm going to go 84 79 and our lives are officially better after tonight. <laughs> yes, they were. Uh, I'm well, I'm in that range, man. I was like 85 78. So uh, some of that range. I think another key is rank mass. Mass has got to draw a big guy out. He's got to shoot it well from deep tonight. You'll draw him out. So, uh, Dane, tell me, hey, again, let's go back because people are going to be traveling back. Backs might hurt, knees, and all that stuff. Maybe tripping and falling. DrDaneTodd.com, right? That's right. DrDaneTodd.com or look us up on the website or give us the office a call at 402 484 4012. Oh my gosh, this is amazing! Hey, uh, we're out of time, aren't we? We good? Yep, we're, we get the beds playing right now. So, uh, you guys, hey, enjoy yourselves. Be All safe. Right. Watch tonight. Uh, we're gonna do it for Memphis, man. Yeah, uh, go Big Red. You guys have a great weekend. We'll catch you on a Monday. Go Big Red. That's awesome. Yeah, that's that was cool. That was, that's, that's,